Hello, and welcome to Calming the Chaos, where we present tips, tools, and techniques to help you find peace in a chaotic world. I'm your host, Tracy Canella, licensed mental health counselor at Lokahi Counseling. This channel and the Calming the Chaos podcast is for those who want self-help and education. It's not a substitute for counseling or psychotherapy. So if you like the information, please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. Thanks so much for listening. And now, let the chaos begin. Hello, and welcome to Calming the Chaos with Tracy Canella, licensed mental health counselor at Lokahi Counseling. Thanks for joining me today. Today, I'm going to be talking about confinement chaos. And that is simply with all of the orders that states and countries have had about sheltering in place so that we can be protected from COVID-19, there is confinement in some senses. When we think of all of the businesses that have been closed, hairdressers and some restaurants and how we are encouraged to stay in our homes and stay safe and stay healthy, we do experience a bit of confinement because of these rules that are meant to protect us. So while a lot of us are doing confinement and we're doing it the best that we can, a lot of us are experiencing confinement chaos. I do believe that this has been previously called cabin fever, when I am stuck in a little cabin with you and you and you, or just by myself, and I start to feel very confined. My mind goes just with a lot of thoughts, just very active, and I start to lash out on you, start to feel different ways, start to feel frustrated or sad and scared. So this is what we're gonna be talking about today. And what we'll focus on is the two types of people who experience confinement chaos. Now there are two types of people in my thinking, possibly there are more, but the ones that I'm gonna be talking about today are those people who in general like socializing with people and those who in general prefer not to socialize with people. So when we think of confinement chaos and these two groups of people, we'll start talking about those who prefer to socialize with people. Now, these folks are those who have had a history of positive interactions with people, whether it be their family, friends, caregivers, they have a positive interaction with people. And so of course, they're gonna find comfort and love, companionship, they're going to find that they like doing things with people, they like having fun, they like going out, and they like the experience of having people in their energy field, which is simply like, I can touch you, I can see you, you're not on a video screen, I can smell you, I can hug you, anything that has to do with the five senses these people really seem to prefer having that interaction with people. And so it has to do with a positive experience. And so when in confinement, there is a loss and that loss comes because we are prohibited in some cases from interacting with the people who we really want to interact with. So on the other hand, there are people who prefer not to be in general, prefer not to be with people and and doing things. They prefer to stay by themselves. So these folks have a sort of confinement chaos as well. And while shelter in place actually sounds like a really cool thing to these people, they do struggle. They struggle with a couple of things. One, they struggle with their own thoughts and feelings. If they're a single person on their own, they will be left with themselves. And if they're not comfortable in their own skin or with their own bodies or with their own thoughts and feelings, they may feel discomfort. And two, they may be confined with people who they don't like or people who do not like them. So these folks have generally had experiences that are not so positive, perhaps even abusive or neglectful. And they are, 
in confinement faced with people that they may not be comfortable with. And so it could be awkward. It could be weird. It could be awkward, which is my new favorite word. And the energy it takes these folks to be in confinement with people that they may not get along with is so overwhelming that they struggle with the chaos of overwhelm as opposed to the folks over here who were struggling with the chaos of loss. So with overwhelm, it is that I feel that there is too much sensory information coming in and or energy from other people that I'm not comfortable with. And so it's sort of hard to keep it contained. And so there's this sense of, I should be a little bit happier because we're all confined, right? But then there's also some social pressures that you wouldn't expect because now we're having more online meetings or Facebook lives or these things where you can join a live webinar and what else are you going to do? So these folks might also experience some social pressures to do some things that they wouldn't normally do. And so again, these are people who are mainly introverted and have had possibly uh, like not positive experiences with people and doing things and they are going to want to avoid and experience a feeling of overwhelm because they are with people that they don't prefer to be with or they're with their own thoughts and feelings. So let's explore some of the thoughts and feelings while we're on the subject because you know thoughts and feelings really do matter and this is why we're here, right? We're here so that we can manage our thoughts and feelings and calm the chaos of our minds. So in the minds of those who prefer to be with people, here are some common thought patterns that are present. Now there may be more but these are the common ones that I was able to think of for folks who actually really like socializing with people. So in confinement, these are the thoughts that these folks tend to have. One, I'm going crazy here all alone. Two, anything is better than being by myself. Three, will this ever end? What if it doesn't? What if I'm always by myself? What if I never get to see my friends again? Four, I didn't get to go to prom. I didn't get to go to graduation. I didn't get to go on that trip to Europe. I didn't get to go to the basketball game that I wanted to go to. In fact, basketball was completely canceled and so was golf. I didn't get to go to that concert that I really wanted to attend. Five, I need a hug and I may never get one again from somebody I truly care about. Six, I am just not happy when other people are not here to cheer me up or encourage me on. And seven, I am stuck with people I don't care about and I'm not able to see the people I do care about. And so having these thoughts produces feelings. I don't know if you even noticed any feelings coming up when I talked about these thoughts, but I'm going crazy here all alone kind of sounds anxious and frantic and being all by myself. Will this never end? Sounds a little fearful and about the feeling of loss sounds very sad or depressed, forlorn even. So when these thoughts are present, feelings are present and chaos could be present, especially if these thoughts continue unchecked. And so common thoughts that are present with those folks who prefer not to be with other people and really prefer to be alone, but they may be in confinement with other people who don't like them or they don't like, or they're in confinement with their own thoughts and feelings. Here are seven examples of thought patterns common with these folks. One, I'm going crazy here with all these people. Get me out of here. Two, anything is better than being with all these people. Three, will this ever end? What if it doesn't? Oh my gosh, will I be stuck here forever? Get me out of here. 
four. I just need a quiet moment to gather my thoughts and I may never ever get one because it is so noisy in here. Five, I wish people would just stay away from me and leave me alone. Six, these people are bringing me down and making me mad. It's their fault. Seven, why did I ever think I loved this person? Why did I ever think I liked this person? Why was I ever attracted to this person? Get me out of here. And so you can see with these folks over here, they are really very overwhelmed and they want more peace and quiet and for the things in their world to calm down and to not be so overwhelming and hard to deal with. And so today I'm going to introduce the radical solution to overcoming confinement chaos. Now the radical solution is an acronym, R-A-D-I-C-A-L. I love using acronyms. Those of you who have listened to my podcasts and my YouTube videos before know I am very, very fond of acronyms. So radical is a solution to help calm the confinement chaos. I developed this method for eating disorders originally, and it's just being published right now in a manual. So I'm so excited about that. I tweaked it a little bit to, to fit with calming the confinement chaos. And so I hope that you will get some benefit out of it. I'm truly very excited about it. And also the fact that it's being published in a book. All right, so the R in the radical solution for overcoming confinement chaos is to reflect on your relationship with yourself and with others. So which sort of person are you? Are you a person who in general prefers to socialize with people, prefers those interactions with people and those fun experiences? Or are you a person on this side who prefers in general to not be around people, to keep to themselves and to be quiet. And please do this reflection non-judgmentally. So you don't wanna say, I'm good, bad, right or wrong. I'm good for being this way. I'm bad for being that way. I'm right or wrong. And so you don't wanna be judging, but you just wanna reflect on your relationship preferences. So it's simple to figure this out, you know? So do you like being with people and do you generally have positive experiences? If so, you might be one of those people who is experiencing loss and confinement chaos. So on the flip side, are you a person who has in general had negative experiences with other people and not so great social experiences? So you may in general want to be alone. And this is a spectrum. And you can be on either side of the spectrum. It can be either extreme, I really want to socialize, or extreme, I really want to isolate, I want to be a hermit. But there's all these little points in between those two. So you might fall under one of those points. Just take some time to reflect on what sort of person you are. That's going to help you to do the rest of the radical solution to overcoming confinement chaos. And uh, just the bottom line is that most people want to be with the people they want to be with. So even folks on this side who don't generally prefer to be around people, they like to be around people who they are comfortable and safe with. That might be a fewer amount than the folks who like to socialize, but they do want people. All right. So the A in the radical solution to overcoming your confinement chaos is to assess your own ability and willingness to make any changes. So you're, you're experiencing confinement chaos, but you're not really sure if you wanna make a change. This is the importance of this step, to assess your own ability and your willingness. So your ability would be the actual way or the actual power that you have to change and willingness would be do i really want to yeah i actually do have the power to but do i really want to am i motivated to so if we're on this side and we really like socializing with people and we do an assessment of ourselves we might find that yeah i really am able and willing to make changes i want to do more reaching out over safe methods, but that is the assessment for a person who 
in general like to socialize. On the other hand, those who are going to be doing an assessment, they're around people that they don't like, do this assessment of whether I want to learn communication skills so that I can more peacefully exist with people or even doing a communication with yourself so that you can be more comfortable being with yourself. There is so much material out there that can help you to learn and grow and, and discover yourself and be more comfortable with yourself. You need to assess your ability and your willingness to make those changes. The D in the radical solution to overcoming your confinement chaos is to discover and describe your emotional experiences. Now, this is where it gets into the really nitty gritty work. So do you want to decide to change your thinking so that possibly you can change your feelings? So after you do the assessment, you want to discover and describe your emotional experiences and decide if you'd like to make changes in your thinking. So you've already done the assessment and you have the ability and the willingness to make changes. So what you'll want to do then is discover, which is just observe and describe your emotional experiences. And so we'll go back to the thoughts because really you need to decide whether you're going to change the thoughts that will affect the way you feel. We'll go back to the thoughts. The people who miss having in-person contact with others. The very first thought that I mentioned is I'm going crazy here all alone. So that thought will create a feeling of possibly panic or sadness or frustration, fear, and if you want to calm the chaos of your mind, you do need to discover what is going on in your mind and decide if you'd like to make a change in your thinking that is more truthful and helpful for you. In this example, a more truthful and helpful thought would be, I'm fine. There's nothing to indicate that I'm going crazy. This is very difficult and I feel insert emotion here, frustrated, mad, scared, fearful. I'm not all alone. I can always reach out over the phone or over the computer or even write a letter. I'm going to be fine. So you see how changing your thinking can change the way that you feel. For those of you who were observing their feelings during what I just said, it may have been quite a bit different than when I said, I am going crazy here all alone. It's not as emotionally intense when you are more truthful and helpful with yourself. And so on the other hand, for the folks who prefer not to be with people in general, and their first thought that I mentioned of the seven thoughts is, I'm going crazy here with all of these people. Get me out of here. Once you've done the assessment and decided that you are able and willing to make some changes, you may decide that you want to change that thought pattern to something that's more truthful and helpful as well. So you could decide that you wanted to say something like this. I'm doing fine. I just prefer more quiet. I know there are quiet places. I can get to these quiet places. I will not go crazy. I will survive this. I'm going to be fine. Again, observe what you feel between those two statements. I'm going crazy here with all these people. Get me out of here. Or the second statement, which is I'm going to be fine. I'm going to get through this. I'm feeling some emotions. I'm feeling some frustration and overwhelm, but I will be fine. So that's the, that is the way that you are going to be able to discover, describe, and decide to make a change. That's the D in the radical solution. The I in the radical solution to overcoming your confinement chaos is to use your intellect, that is your thinking mind, and your intuition, which is your feeling body, to be able to make a decision about what to do. I am very big on the mind-body connection. So what we think and what we feel intuitively 
can go hand in hand in this. So here's an example of how you would maybe do this in confinement and when you're experiencing chaos, using intellect and intuition to make choices and decisions, a simple invitation to a Zoom birthday party might trigger some of these thought processes to happen for those who really like socializing, they're like all over it and there's no real decision. They just know in their mind that, that they've had positive experiences with people before and they're going to do it again. And then they know in their, in their feeling body that it feels good to be able to socialize on any level. So they're going to say, yeah, I'm going to do this thing. But for the folks who don't prefer to be around people, they might have a different sort of use of intellect and intuition to make a choice whether to go to a simple Zoom birthday party. It may be that they haven't had a really good experiences over the screen. And they intellectually know this because of their experiences. And then they sort of feel like, oh, this is going to be way too much for me. So using a combination of the mind and the intellect, your logical thinking mind and your intuitive knowing body to make decisions and choices that will help you calm the chaos of confinement. The C in the radical solution for overcoming your confinement chaos is to communicate your needs clearly to others and to yourself. So at minimum, do it with yourself first right? So I'm going to communicate clearly to myself what is going on with my thoughts and my feelings. And then I can decide whether or not I'm going to communicate those thoughts and feelings to others so that I might be able to enlist some help in calming my own chaos during this time. So you can do this with a simple I statement. And, you, and I, like I said, you would be better served doing this on your own with yourself first and then deciding whether you are going to be sharing that with other people who are affected. So I'm going to make up a situation right now about a fictitious brother I have. Say I'm a teenager and I have a brother and we're both in confinement and he's decided that he wants to take out our old family violin and learn how to play the violin during this confinement chaos. And he gets so obsessed with playing the violin. He is playing it for hours and hours every day. And it's affecting my concentration because I'm trying to read a book. All right. So that's the situation. A simple I feel statement or an I statement can help you clarify what's going on with you first. So if you even just wrote this down, I feel blank when blank. So I feel, insert feeling here, when blank, insert situation there, period. Then the next sentence is, I would like blank. And so thinking really hard about what you would like to happen. So for example, in this situation, before even approaching your brother, you may just want to get clear about your feelings. I feel frustrated and overwhelmed. When I hear sounds for long periods of time, period. So you notice I'm not blaming my brother. I'm just saying what is true for me. And then the second part of the sentence is, I would like at least an hour break after every hour that you play your violin. So that's really specific, right? So I can decide to tell my brother this, or I can just decide oh yeah, that's true for me. I get it. I'm going to put in earplugs. I'm going to go to a quiet place or take a walk. But yeah, the, the C is a very interesting part of the radical solution because it gives you the choice, another C word, about whether you're going to communicate that to other people or just to yourself and then take care of yourself. Also, another word that begins with C is caveat. So there is a caveat with this in that if I tell my brother, if I choose to communicate with my brother, there is a caveat though. The caveat is he may choose not to hear and he may choose to continue playing his violin for however long he wants to without honoring my wishes. So just know 
that with the C, you may not always get what you want, but if you don't ask, then you'll never know, right? The A, the second A in overcoming confinement chaos using the radical solution is to allow yourself to receive assistance from others and also from yourself. Now, if you've gotten this far in the radical solution, you've already started to receive assistance from yourself because this is exactly why you're here, to receive assistance. But to allow yourself to actually really receive assistance from others is very hard. In that situation with my brother, say I did approach him and I said, look, I would like you to play your violin for an hour, but then give an hour of silence and then you can play for another hour. I just need that hour break. And he says, hey, no problem, that's totally fine. And then I say, oh, well, you know what? Maybe that was not a reasonable request. I'm sorry, I'm being stupid, I'm being silly, just go ahead. So he just offered you an out. He offered you exactly what you wanted. And if you don't take it, that's on you, right? allowing yourself to receive the assistance from others and allowing yourself to take care of yourself. That is a really very important part of the radical solution to overcoming confinement chaos. And then finally, the L in the radical solution to overcoming a confinement chaos is love yourself through this. This is a really difficult time for all of us. And so it's only gonna get better if you love yourself through it. If you get angry at yourself, notice that and get back to that energy of love. The world needs more love, especially right now. And it starts within you and loving yourself and giving that love out to how many people you want to give it out to, right? It's your resource. You can give it any way you'd like to give it. It kind of reminds me of that old 70s song. If you can't be with the one you love, honey, love the one you're with. And it may sound a little cheesy, but it's so true. And it's a very crucial last step to the radical solution to overcoming your confinement chaos. And speaking of confinement chaos, if you're going through that, I would love to be able to have you join me on my next podcast where I interview Jared DeFife. He is a psychologist in the Atlanta, Georgia area. And he and I had this wonderful talk about relationship chaos. And especially when one or more of the partners in the relationship struggles with ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Uh, Dr. DeFife is an expert in ADHD and we have a great talk about being in a romantic sort of relationship, the problems that can arise, the chaos that can arise, and some tips and tools to help you through. So stay tuned for that. I appreciate you being here with me today and talking about the radical solution. Best to you, best wishes in using the radical solution, and I appreciate you. You take care, and I'll see you at the next podcast.